This bad boy over here has been under the radar for way too long. And for a good reason. He kinda sucked. Echo was really not that good. But now, in the new ranked season, in the new with the new patch notes, the new changes, there is a single item. Actually, there's two items that make Echo a potentially broken champion. And I'll explain all of it. Because now you have to play Echo completely differently than before. Completely different. It, it literally changed. 180 degrees. I know one person that's gonna be loving this video especially. It's a person that I've been coaching a lot on Echo. I'm not gonna say his name of course because I don't want to reveal private information. So, let's talk about it. Here you can see the number one thing, which is the, the Soul Stealer. It's the Soul Stealer. So this item, I remember I was streaming, you know, I was testing this item. I told you guys, this is probably going to be a mid-game item. You know, if you're snowballing, you then get this item to keep snowballing harder. On Echo, on the other hand, it is not. On Echo, you can pretty reliably build it as your first item. I am saying this for the good Echo players, by the way. If you are not a good Echo player yet, then your build is going to look like this. I still recommend you to get this item because this is this is going to bring your Echo to the next level and it's going to adjust your Echo playstyle towards this meta because more on this later, this is extremely important, but I'll, I'll explain more on that la later about adjusting your playstyle. So for the really good Echo players, start off with this item. For, you know, the Echo players that are still learning, get this item as your second or as your third item. So... You get this as your first, I'm gonna talk about getting it as your first item, but essentially it's the same. Um, you get it as your first item and here it starts, here the game starts. You're gonna be playing very safe, but you are gonna dive into the kills and the assists to get them. That's the whole point of this item. I'll explain all of this during the gameplay, now just talk about the build. So Boots of Man is gonna be second, the perfect boots for Echo. And then here you have a choice. Let's say you already have like 10 stacks of the, of the Soul Stealer, okay? You already have 10 stacks, you want to preserve the stacks. You're going to skip the Lich Bane, you're going to go for the Crown. Because this one is going to give you the shield. Like sure, Lich Bane gives you more damage, but this one gives you more, more sustain, not sustain damage, but sustain as in you can survive much more easily. And the thing is, if you get 10 stacks from the Soul Stealer, it's going to be giving you 50 ability power extra, and it's going to give you the 10% movement speed. So preserving that bonus is going to be much more important than the bonus stats the Lich Bane give you. Uh, compared to the crown so if you have a couple stacks on the soul stealer like i would say like above above six above six and then i would say you should go for the crown if you have below six then go for the lich bane play more aggressive and try to get those skills that's what you that's how you can decide which one you get as your third item after the boots then yeah, so whichever item you get, you're gonna get the other one after. So if you get the crown, then you're gonna get the Lich Bane. If you get the Lich Bane, then you're gonna get the crown, right? So these are gonna be your items. Then you go for the Rabadon's Death Cap. At this point, you're gonna be between level 11 and level 14. So getting that Rabadon's Death Cap is gonna give you a lot of AP. Of course, they changed Rabadon's Death Cap. Now it skills. Like, if you're level 1 and get a Rabadon's Death Cap, you're only gonna get 20% bonus AP. But at level 15, it's now 45%, which is actually even more than the 40% prior to this update. So you're gonna get this as your fourth item. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And then as your last item, it's situational, right? Like Infinity Orb is always good. But the funny thing is, if you get this far into the game, the Infinity Orb kind of is useless because you're one-shotting enemies anyways, but it can be useful to just one-shot tanks, I guess. If they are tanky, you can go for this one because you don't need a Void Staff anymore. You know what I mean? You don't need a Void Staff anymore. So that, that's the only thing I have to say. Otherwise, if they have shielding, like Karma, like any 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 sort of shielding, excuse me, um, you go for the Oce Oceanit's Trident. This is like the Serpent Fang for magic damage champions. Very, very powerful, especially on Echo. Because Echo does single target damage with his third ability, so you're gonna be shredding 60% of their shields. With your first ability and your ultimate, you are not, but it's still good. Like, when you focus that one enemy, you're gonna shred them, you're gonna destroy them. So this is how you build Echo, and for the enchantment, I recommend Proto Belt. Every single game, you Proto Belt. Literally always Proto Belt. Especially when you go for the Soul Stealer, because Proto Belt can give you assists that you wouldn't get otherwise. Like, you can hit enemies with the rockets of the Proto Belt just to get an assist, so... That also works. And for the runes, you go for first strike. I tried electrocute, it's trash. Electrocute sucks. So you go for first strike. Here, it's extremely important to go for the domination tree. Now, I know I've probably made some pri previous Echo videos. I know I've probably coached people on Echo and told them to run the precision tree because it's safer. It's true. But now we're in a new update. We are in a new update and things have changed. And while the precision tree is still going to be quite powerful on Echo, where you go for Gathering Storm, you know, Giant Slayer or, or Cup of Grass, and then here you go for Legend Bloodline, this is still quite strong. 
is not going to be as strong as the domination tree however because you need to remember now we're playing a different play style of echo which i'm going to explain you go for the Mag Mag magi soul stealer and you go for early game power you want to have early game power and your runes can help you with that they contribute massively because here you go for sudden impact here you go for cheap shot when you hit that first ability, you're going to proc the cheap shot, even with your second ability. And here you go for the eyeball collector. You get a couple kills early game compared with the, with this Magi Soul Stealer. You are going to be unbeatable because the eyeball collector is also going to stack up and you're going to be unbeatable. But these two runes alone are going to help you massively in the early game. And then for the late game, even if you struggle stacking up the Mag Magi Soul Stealer, you can still stack up AP with the eyeball collector. And of course, the Gathering Storm. And as your last one, you can go for Giants there if you're against Giants. But generally, you don't want to pick Echo into Giants anyways. You want to pick Echo into squishier types of champions. So this is the build for Echo. Um, yeah, this is it. Quite simple, huh? Well, actually, that was not simple. But I hope I made you guys understand. For the spells, you go for Smite and Flesh. So that is it gonna, that's going to be it for the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. Oh, what the hell? There we go, into the gameplay. Since I downloaded the PBE server for, for Chinese Wild Rift, I get that little weird app. I don't really know how to turn it off. Let's put the screen, let me put the screen correctly for you guys. Yeah, so I'm playing Echo. I do have to say, this was the, this was like the second Echo game I played in this, uh, in this, uh, in this season, this update, you could say. Because the first one I tried Electrocute, it was trash. It was actually horrible. Like, Electrocute Echo is just so bad. Because you get so much gold from the first strike. It is crazy. And you also do more damage with the, with the first strike. Electrocute is only better in the early stages of the game. It's going to do more damage early game. But when you scale a little bit further, it's going to fall off like crazy. So, let's talk about this new playstyle I've been talking about, right? During the build part. I told you guys a million times I would tell you during the video. Um... So, you guys remember how with Echo, you dive balls deep, and then you ult, you know, you just do your job as an Echo. Now, you play it a bit differently, you play safer. Essentially, in the early mid game, you are gonna be chasing kills and assists, but not in a way where you're gonna die for it. For example, if you can turret dive an enemy, let's say an enemy has a 600 gold bounty, you have a 300 gold bounty. You can turret dive the enemy, guarantee the kill, but you're likely gonna die for it. Back in the days, you would obviously take it. Now, you would not. Unless you have zero stacks on the Magi Soul Stealer. See, this is this is this already starts to highlight the big difference, right? The big difference compared to old Echo. You're not gonna sacrifice deaths anymore for anything. Even for dragons, even for Baron. Well, Baron is a different story, but even for a dragon or herald, you're not gonna jump over the wall if you do not have your ult. You're not gonna. You're not gonna jump just for the chance to steal the dragon. You're not gonna jump in the enemy backline to kill their ADC because their ADC is strong and then, you know, use suicide for it. You're not gonna do that anymore. You're never gonna do that. You are always playing it safe. I'm saying playing it safe, but I don't mean like you're always gonna be safe. But like right here, look. Right now it doesn't matter, by the way, but, but what I mean is you really wanna keep your lives up. You don't wanna die. But hells, isn't that obvious advice? You know, you should always take. A, you should always not want to die when you play the game. That's not true. That's not true. As I said, I gave. I literally just gave you examples of situations where it can be. Where it is actually better to just suicide and get a kill. Like if the enemy is super fat, you suicide and get a kill. If the enemy is under the turret, you can get a kill and it's worth a lot. You get the kill. Or for example, um, if there is a massive wave in mid lane and you can kill the enemy mid laner and have your mid lane shove the wave onto dirt, it's of course also worth to suicide and kill the enemy. But now it depends on how many stacks you have on a Magi Soul Stealer. Early, early game, when you don't have the item yet, like right now, of course I can make these plays. I'm gonna dive, I'm gonna play crazy. But the moment I get the Soul Stealer, I can still do it, by the way. But the moment I get my first few stacks, the game changes. The clock switches, okay? That's when you make that switch. And you will be able to see the switch in my gameplay. Also, I want to remind you guys, by the way, I have, wait a minute, it's almost the end of October. Oh yeah, so it's almost the end of October. The October skin giveaway is going to be done almost. I'm giving away three skins and all you have to do to enter is put down a comment under the video. Um, also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Really, really supports the channel a lot when you give them likes. So I'm very thankful for that. So let's focus on the video more. Um, also with Echo, to take the jungle faster, you want, you want to pre-smite jungle camps. You do have to be careful though, you want to make sure that the enemy jungler is not in your jungle. Like right here, I pre-smited it, because the passive of the second ability, 
does bonus damage if the enemy has less than like 20% health or 30 or something like that. Basically, if the enemy is low HP, your basic attacks will hurt a lot. Right here, there's potential for me to kill the Kai'Sa. Uh, I want to be a bit careful though, because like they, everyone is full HP except the Kai'Sa, and Kai'Sa can ult, so that's why I was hesitating a bit to dive. So I, I don't think I actually ended up diving here. Now you have a timer on the enemy, on the blue buffs and the red buffs and everything, which is quite interesting. Like, I literally know their blue buff is up. Again, I was potentially thinking about diving. I did actually dive him. Nice. I need to ult here. Yep. I need to ult. So here you go. That's my first... Uh, I, I'm sorry to the Yasuo. I remember in the game, it was actually a mistake. I didn't mean to push him away. It was, uh, it was actually a mistake. What I was going to say is, this is the moment I got my first stack of the Magi's Soul Stealer. You can already see I'm being a bit more passive. Like, I could have fully committed for that blue buff and probably stolen it. But I made sure I maintained the safe position. I lost the blue buff, but I maintained the safe position in case they collapsed on me and killed me. Because I want to maintain these stacks. Because even though you only have three stacks, you may be thinking, it's only three, doesn't matter. Three stacks is 15 ability power. 15! That's a lot. That's like, that's a ton of ability power you're getting for nothing. 15 ability power. So you want to make sure you preserve it. So like, as I said, now the clock has switched, you know? Four minutes into the game, I got the Magi Soul Stealer. I got my first stack. Now it changed. Now you're basically going to be scouting for kills. Whenever you see a free kill or an assist, assist is important too. Um, like right here, look, this is the perfect moment for me to gank. Like, this is a potential kill on the Alistar, on the Caitlyn. I stunned, I stunned the Alistar, but I'm I kill Caitlyn is dead too. There we go. You see, this is perfect. But look at how I'm playing. I'm playing it safe. Look at my positioning. I really want you guys to pay good attention to how I'm fighting this. Like normally I would I would be more aggressive. Normally I would be looking to get like a big ultimate on them. Try to kill all of them. But you can clearly see now taking it easy. Because I want to preserve my stacks for the dragon. I have 7 stacks of the Magi Soul Stealer right now. Which is 35 additional ability power. Boom there we go. That's 10. 10 stacks. I'm ulting here. I'm ulting. I love... Okay. This is so funny because I literally lost the dragon 100% because I could have killed the Evelyn. But why did I ult? Why did I ult? You know why I ulted? Because in that moment in the game, I was not sure if Evelyn had her ultimate. I did not want to die. I literally gave up the dragon because I thought she could potentially have an ultimate to maintain my Magi stacks. Like, look, I have 14 stacks. Now, you may be thinking, like, what, what kind of a stupid play is that? But I'm trying to enlighten you on how this item works and how you need to play with this item and about the true power of this item. Because I feel like people will, don't really understand yet how incredibly powerful this item really is if you play it correctly. Like, you need to look at it this way. If you die, if you die and you have a lot of stacks, you are literally losing 50. 50 ability power, 50, 50, that's like almost an entire tier 3 item you're losing, like right here, look, I'm flashing away, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, that was already too much, I could have killed her and died for it probably, but I just don't want to die, I don't want to die, I flashed away because I didn't have my ultimate, better safe than sorry, um, that's the thing you need to think about, so you need to think about yourself, is it worth getting a single dragon for 50 AP? The answer was no in that situation for me. Because sure, we would get a dragon, but it's not like the enemies are going to get dragon soul. There's absolutely no way. Um, because I am, I'm maintaining my power. For the second dragon, I'll be insanely powerful, and I won't give it to them. So I literally gave up the dragon there to maintain my power, and now I can keep snowballing the game. Because if she killed me, let's say she killed me, okay? The Magi Soul Steel would have, would have been like useless right now. Because I would have been at 4 stacks rather than 14. And the difference would be huge. Like, instead of getting 90 additional ability power, I would only be getting 40. It's a difference of 50. It's, it's massive. Massive, massive, massive. So what did I go this game? Like, I have a Lich Bane highlighted. But I'm looking at this game right now. I should be going for the crown. Like, right now, I should go back and build a crown. I'm not sure what I actually built. But with the, with the information I have right now, 100% I need a crown. 100%. So I did go for the Lich Bane. Interesting. Interesting. So this game, 100% crown. You know why I need a crown? Because I have 14 stacks. I already have enough damage. So for me, now it's more important to preserve my stacks rather than do even more damage. Like, I'm not saying it's a mistake that I'm making. It's just a safer play to get the crown. Because you're going to get, sure, a little bit less damage. But you still have so you have more than enough damage with this build. More than enough. So you don't need a Lich Bane yet. You don't need it. 
You want to have defensive a defensive item. I mean, look at the damage I'm doing on the scuttle crap already. It's absolutely crazy. Again, I am scouting for kills. Like this Caitlyn could be a potential kill for me. Alistar is here. I could try to kill Caitlyn with my second ability here, and then ult away. I'm pretty. Yeah. Look at that! Look at that! Look, you see how I'm playing? It's hilarious! It's hilarious! Because the old Echo would never do this! The old Echo would never do this! It's so funny how like now you're now this is definitely the superior way of playing a champion like an Echo. Possibly even Evelyn. Like I think the same story goes for Evelyn. But Echo is a, is much easier to play than Evelyn with this item. Because Echo can run away easily with his ult with his ult. Evelyn can run away with her ult too, but it's not as easy as Echo. It's not as easy as the Echo. Also, I'm playing with one of the best ADCs in Europe. It's Jash. Uh, so that's pretty cool as well. Let's take a look. What am I thinking here? I could go for that red buff here. I should go for that red buff. I'm not sure why. Yeah, okay, there we go. And just smite it. Easy peasy. I don't know where Evelyn is. There she is. Now I do. So now I can try to look for a play with my second ability. You also don't need to use your... You don't necessarily... Uh, like, look, normally I... Oh, oh, I was gonna say normally I would ult there, but I still did it. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, so, second ability. This is something I say during my coaching sessions a lot uh, for Echo players as well. You know, you can use this one, of course, the hard way by stunning the enemies. But you can also use your second ability a bit more of an easier way by... Uh, just get to giving yourself a shield before you engage. Essentially, you walk into your second ability and then you go in. You're gonna have a massive shield that way and it's always gonna be vi uh, uh, viable like that. You can cut off the enemy's path with it as well. So like, you know, you like basically what I did in the last fight, they wanted to chase Yasuo, I just put it there to give myself a shield and to cut off their path from chasing Yasuo. Right here, as you can see, I took the dragon, so the first dragon doesn't matter at all. Yeah, so I have 321 AP, 10 minutes in... What was that? I heard something. Oh, it was just a message. Let me turn off the audio. By the way, if you're not subscribed yet, it's really funny because apparently like 70% of my viewers are not subscribed. I don't really get how. I have 126,000 subscribers. How are there still so many people not subscribed? I'm not saying it in a way to offend anyone, of course, but it's just like there's still so many new people. New people or just people that are too lazy to subscribe. To be fair, that's me too. I, there's so many YouTubers I watch and I haven't even subscribed to. Um, so I don't really don't even know why I'm asking you guys to do this because I don't even do it myself. But hey, if you want to, click on the subscribe button. You can turn on notifications and stuff like that if that's truly what you want, uh, I guess. Also, I have other social media. I have Twitter where you can follow me for stuff related to Wild Rift. I don't really tweet too much. I just tweet sometimes. But Instagram, I post more real life stuff. If you want to follow that, there's also a link in the description. And I have a Discord community. You can talk with me, with the community, with all of that. Find new people to play with. Ask for advice, you know, on what to build and everything like that. We have everything in the Discord server. It's truly actually an amazing Discord server. Again, all the links are in the description if you're interested in checking any of that out. I find it weird that the that I can see her timers as well. Like I know her red buff is up too. I think like I must have had vision on the red buff, so like now I can see that it's up. You know what I mean? I think that's how it's supposed to work. This is a bit risky. Hi, that was video. Now Halston. Yeah, so I took the red buff here again. Look at how passive I'm playing. This is really not. It's kind of a bit disheartening, I should say. Because normally with Echo right here, you know, you would dive deep into them and just make sure you get kills and take risks. Now look what I'm doing. I just get one, actually two kills. My first ability killed Alistar as well. And and then I push. I push the turret. Give me a second. So it's actually quite huge. I'm sitting on 25 stacks right now, guys. 25. Normally I would engage on the entire fight. Probably ace the enemy right there and get an inhibitor turret. But again, I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to take the risk. Because now I'm sitting on 25 stacks. The damage I'm about to do is like 493 AP. I do not even have a Robinhood's death cap. I want to remind you guys. I'm sitting on nearly 500 ability, ability power 13 minutes into the game without a Robinhood's death cap. And now I can get the Robinhood. It's going to be like 750 ability power. I, like, I have to repeat, that is a number you are never able to achieve. You've, it, 
it's unachievable that number in the previous update. Thir like, look, 13 minutes? How much? 776 ability power. Seven, oh my god. 13 minutes into the game, 776 ability power. Wow. That's just unbelievable. But the only way you're gonna get that is with this very, very safe playstyle. Very safe playstyle. You need to play. It's really hard to do. You need to hold yourself from going in. Because we all want to go in and get that pentakill. You know what? We all have that dream. But now, you need to be careful with that. You cannot do that with the Magi Soul Seal. Like right here, I can try to pick off someone with my third ability. Like I could one shot. I need to ult. Yep. I need to ult out instantly. I tried to get a kill. You know what? I, like, you know what's even funny? This was actually worth the dive. Because I did a ton of damage. I got 187 gold from my first strike. My ult is going to be back in like, you know, 27 seconds anyways. So this was this was worth because I poked them. Uh, and my I got first strike gold. It's very, very good. But it's Salada. My brother. Neyo. Good day, Okay. Dab Khalsan, I'm going to go. Five minutes. Eh, it's my cousin. Okay. Haha. Okay. It's good. Okay. Ah, I'm going to video. Okay. Alright, sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. What am I doing here? I'm just split pushing. Oh, the damage I have right now, by the way. I can literally one-shot anyone. I can, like, 800 ability. I have 800 AP. Look at that. Look at that. Just look at that. I just one-shot the Caitlyn from 70% HP with my third ability. If he pulls him, he's dead. Okay, he missed the pull. It's fine. This Thrash played pretty well, by the way. I just want to say that. And the Yasuo. Like, my team actually played quite well. We're trying to end here, but we can't really end because they're going to respawn. We can't really end this one. Yeah, we cannot end. Right here, I can kill the Kai'Sa if I really wanted to. But I'm not... I mean, yeah, I need to run. No. I need to ult here. Yep. I almost one-shot an Alistar. I, did you just see that? I used my ultimate to run away there. And I just almost accidentally one-shot an Alistar. Alistar. <laughs> I do need to run away though. Fiora is a bit dangerous for me. Again, play it, but safe. Be careful. Ooh, they may kill me here. I'm using my second ability to survive. Look at how I'm doing. I'm not fighting. I'm running away. I'm running away, and only when I see an opportunity to, like, poke them with first ability, I'll do it. 29 stacks, by the way, on the Magi's Soul Stealer. Now I have my ultimate again. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to lose 10 stacks. How much AP? 837. I can buy another item too. How much am I gonna have? How much? How much? How much? No, not stasis. Proto belt. Come on. That's more like it, baby. 994. Essentially a thousand AP. 1000 AP. I have 1000 AP with this build. And the build is so cheap because the Magi Soul Stealer is like only 1500 gold. This is... How much damage? How much damage? He he blocked it, actually, but... It's like still... Look at that. Oh, my lord. Look at that. 1,300 damage. One shot. That's a one shot. Yep. Look at this build. Guys, please... This is the thing. If you play it safe... In the late game, you can do this with 30 stacks. Triple kill, by the way. I'm, I Can I one shot her in base? Look at this. Look at this. Second ability? I'm pretty sure I'll one shot her in the base. Oh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was a quadra kill, by the way. That was ridiculous. That was against like three challenger enemies as well, by the way. Let's take a look at how much damage I did. I don't need... Did I even get the MVP? Did I even get the MVP? Yeah, I didn't. Because actually my team played incredibly well too. It was not just me. Yasuo did a very good job too. Um, and Jin and... Everyone except... Yeah, everyone actually. Everyone. Oh. So thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.